Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to recreate Excel's EO month function, that stands for end of month, in Microsoft Access VBA. Today's question comes from Ethan in San Marcos, Texas, one of my Platinum members. Ethan says, I'm in the process of transitioning numerous Excel spreadsheets to a Microsoft Access database. Good for you. One function that we frequently use in our spreadsheets is EO month. Is there a way to replicate this functionality within Microsoft Access? Well, of course, Ethan, this isn't very hard to do in Access. Let me show you how you can make a custom function in VBA so that you can just call it EO month wherever you want to in your forms and reports and your queries and whatever. Now, first, I want you to go watch my first day of the month video. In this video, we use the date serial function and a few others to find the first day of the month and the last day of the month. And we do this in a query with no VBA. But one thing that EO month adds is the ability to add a number of months to it. So you could say find the last day of next month or three months from now or 12 months from now, whatever. So we're going to add that little bit of functionality in the function we're going to create. But definitely go watch this video first. And of course, today, this will be a developer video. What does that mean? Well, that means we are going to be using some VBA. So if you do not know how to program in VBA, don't worry. It's not hard. Go watch this video first. It's my intro to VBA. It's about 20 minutes long, and it'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. And we are going to create our own custom function today. We're going to make an EO month function we can use in Access. So if you have never done that before, go watch this video on how to create your own custom function. It'll make today's lesson a whole lot easier. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them, and then come on back. I'll wait for you. First, let's take a quick look at how EO month works in Excel if you're not familiar with it. So let's say you've got a date. All right, there's today's date. And let's say you want to figure out what the last day of that month is. All right, we can use the EO month. So equals EO month, all right? Returns the last day of the month before a specified number of months. All right, so we'll go with this as the start date. All right, now if you don't want to add any months to it, just put a zero here. All right, in other words, don't add another month. All right, enter, and it, it formats it as a number, so we just gotta use the Format Painter. Format that as a date, and there you go. That's the last day of this month. All right, let's put that zero up here, and we'll go one, two, like that, and then we'll auto-fill and slide all this stuff across. And then we'll take this guy, and we'll reference that zero by using the cell reference instead. Okay, and then of course we have to make this an absolute reference, so we'll click here and we'll go F4. Boop. All right, enter. That way this doesn't slide across, it keeps it on that date. And now we'll bring this across and then we'll widen all this stuff out. Okay. And if you don't know how to do any of that stuff I just did, go watch my Excel videos. They're really good too. Access is my specialty, but yeah, I, I know a little bit about Excel as well. But the point I'm trying to make is this is zero months in the future. What's the end of the month date, right? Here's one month in the future. So October, end of month, November, end of month, and so on. Okay, and we want to replicate this functionality in Access with a function that we'll call EO month. We'll send to it a date and then how many months in the future. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I have a global module. This is where you want to put your uh, the functions you create so they're public and they can be used anywhere in the database. So let's open up that global module. And if you don't have a global module in your database, that's okay. Let me get rid of this for a second. All you gotta do is go over to create and then pick module. Don't pick class module, pick module. All right, so back here in my global module, there's a couple things in here. Don't worry about this stuff. There's a sleep function and some other stuff. We're gonna come down to the bottom and we're gonna create a public function. So public, that means everybody can use it. Function, that means it's gonna return a value and we're gonna call it EO month, just like in Excel. If you wanna make it EO month like that, that's fine too. I'm gonna make it all caps because that's, that's an Excel function. In Excel, all the, all the functions are in caps. Is that important? No, absolutely not. All right, EO month takes two bits of data, D as a date, that's the starting date you give it, and then a number of months to add. Now, a lot of the times when you're using EO month, me personally, I just want the end of the current month. So I'm gonna make this optional, a little bit different from Excel. All right, so we'll say optional, and then months to add as a long, and the optional value will be zero. So if I don't give it a value, it'll just use the current month. All right, and as a date means this function is going to return a date value. 
All right, now, in the first day of the month video, we learned how to find the first day of the month and the last day of the month. This one's gonna be a little bit different because we gotta simply add in there the number of months to add. So, EL month, the value of the function, this is what it's gonna return, equals date serial, year of D, month of D. Now, here's where it gets tricky. We gotta add months to add, but because it works a little bit, date serial works a little bit differently than EO month in Excel, you gotta add one more to it. Okay, comma. Now, if you put a zero here for the day, it goes minus a day. All right, so if I put one in there, it would give you the first day of the month. A zero means it goes back a day. It's a little trick with date serial. I think I talked about this in the date serial video, right? That zero says go back a day. So if I put in here like, you know, 2000 comma one comma one, you'd get the last day, December 31st of 1999. That's how that works. And that's it. That's all you need right there. And this should replicate EO month in Excel. All right, save it. Let's throw in a quick debug compile. And if you want to test it without, you know, making a query or a form, or whatever, let's open up the immediate window view and then immediate window. And right down here, we can type in commands like question mark EO month. Let's put today's date in here. So inside of the hash, uh, the hash signs, pound signs, hashtag, whatever you want to call them, octothorps, right? <laughs> 2023-09-18, comma, let's just do it without a comma first. Enter, there you go. Here's the end of this month. Want to do next month? All right, let's go back. Brr, comma, one. There you go. Isn't that special? Let's try going back a month, minus one. Enter. There's 831. Sweet. And now you can use EO month in your queries, in your forms, in your reports, wherever you want to use them. If you like this stuff and want to learn more about working with dates and times and all kinds of things with moving parts and molecular structures and stuff, uh, my access expert level 27 is part one of my date time functions lessons. I cover everything you want to know about dates and times and formats and all kinds of cool stuff. And the next class, 28, we go over date add, date diff, date part, date serial, how to make ordinals, first, second, third, how to calculate age, list of birthdays, you name it, right? Access expert 27 and 28. And if you like programming and VBA and want to learn more, well, I got tons of developer lessons available as well. Just check them out on my website. There you go. And that's going to do it for today, folks. That is your tech help video. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, 
including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.